All right, so welcome to this free EdTech Teacher webinar. My name is Avra Robinson, and I'm an instructor um, with EdTech Teacher, been an instructor with them for about six years. And before that, for about 15 years, I was the technology coordinator, coach, um, and teacher in a small district here in Northern Illinois, where I live. And before that, I was a classroom teacher. So I'm excited to be here today just to chat about a new tool that I've been exploring recently um, called Canva. And Canva initially came out, um, you know, years ago, and we used it for business, mainly for making images and things like that. And what they've done is they have created like an education version of their program. It's basically the same as the paid version. So Canva was one of those tools I always kind of wanted to purchase for myself, but never, you know, wanted to actually spend the money each month. And so when they started providing this wonderful free tool to teachers and students, I just was so excited. So I've been exploring it over the last couple of months, kind of taking it out for a spin, seeing what it could do. Um, and there's a lot of creation opportunities so I'm excited to kind of show you some ideas and then I'm going to do some live demos and kind of show you what's possible. Um, so let me just go ahead and share my screen and um, you can feel free if you'd like to say hi in the chat. Um, for those of you, a couple of you that are here today, that'd be great um, if you want to. If not, just sit back and relax. We are recording the session. So if you need to step out, that's OK. We'll post this on our YouTube channel um, as well as send out the recording to everyone that registered. So again, my name is Avra. My email address is here in the slides. And I'm always um, really happy to hear from people. If I show something today and you need a little support learning how to do it, you can always feel free to shoot me an email or, you know, find me on social media. I'm at Avra Rachel on Twitter, and I'll put that in the slides as well. So let's jump in and, and think about what Canva can, can create. And I think, you know, really the possibilities are limitless um, because teachers and students tend to be some of the most creative people ever. And so, you know, this is just a handful of some ideas. Um, teachers can create with this tool and then teachers can also sign up, you know, have a free education version of it. And then that signs their kids up too. You can import Google Classroom rosters into Canva. And I have some articles that I've written that are posted on our website. And I'll, I link to those in the slides. So um, we'll be able to share those resources with you in case you need a little help getting started. So I've seen teachers creating all sorts of stuff for their classrooms. I mean, you can, you can do stuff for print if you'd like. You can make posters. Um, you know, there's all sorts of templates in there from everything from a business card to a label, you know, to a, an actual physical poster you could hang on the wall. I've seen teachers use it to make name tags and all sorts of stuff but it's also this amazing tool for kids. And so when we think about all the different things that we might want students to create, um, you know, this is just a handful of them here, you know, an infographic or a green screen image where you can take an image and, you know, remove the background and then put it on a different um, background, right? So we could take somebody off the beach and put them in the mountains, that kind of thing. I've seen kids making book trailer posters or comic strips. And the amazing thing about Canva is that there are templates for all of this. So you could definitely start from scratch. Okay. It's a, it's a creation program that kind of looks like, like a, my old fashioned print shop that I used to use in the early 2000s, you know, just a blank canvas but it's got so much more power because there's ability to integrate audio and video and, um, and the, the fonts and the colors and the, even the built-in clip art is all just amazing. And there's just thousands and thousands of options. So I'm going to show you some of this. Let me just show you some examples um, along the way. And then we'll, and then I'll show you actually how, you know, how to get started creating some of this stuff. So What's really cool, here's a comic strip, okay? And I did not make this, this is there in Canva. And what's really neat about it is that they give you like these samples and it's like a template. And then when you push this activity out to your students, you actually get to push out like five pages. So you start out with this example to show kids like what's possible and maybe give them some food for thought. And then it gives you a blank page. And kids could duplicate this page so they could have multiple pages of their comic strip if they wanted. 
And then it gives them like these illustration sets and speech bubbles and things like that. So everything that you would need to, you know, be able to create this um, awesome comic strip. And I know this is small and maybe a little hard to see right here, but you guys, the kitty and the dogs, like the cat, the dog here, they've got them in all different poses. And then over here, they have all different expressions. So lots and lots of um, kind of limitless opportunities for, you know, a, a plot and characters and, and all of that. So really, really cool stuff that kids could create. And this is just one um, template. So let me just pop out of my slides real quick and pop into Canva. Okay. And I'm going to, this was the last thing that I had open here. I'm just going to, you know, canva.com. Okay. And like I said, I have a, an article on how to sign up and get the teacher version. If you um, don't haven't already gotten the, the education ver version, but what I'm going to do right now, you guys is just go up to their search um, bar up here and type in comic strip, just so that you can kind of get a sense of just how you know, many there are. So the cat and dog one um, just had, you know, three rectangles in terms of how to tell your story, but you can see here, this one's got six and then here's one with four. And, you know, so there's all different kind of shapes and sizes. Um, and many of, many of these are multiple pages. So once again, like if I were to click on this one, and this is, you know, slightly different from the other one that I shared, but you can see here, like, here's our template. Here's our example to give us some food for thought and see what's possible. And then, you know, here's the, the blank version of it where we can actually get started building and creating. And then on these pages, they call them illustration sets. And so how awesome is this? And all of this clip art is free. And so that's one of the things that I love because one of the things when I'm working with students is, you know, trying to find images a lot of the time that are free for use and that aren't copyrighted and trying to teach them about digital citizenship and, you know, making sure that they understand that you can't just Google a picture and, and use it for anything you want. But here in Canva, they've got literally thousands of not only drawn images, but also beautiful photos that I'll show you as well. So, you know, lots and lots of opportunities for creativity and for students to be able to do some digital storytelling. You know, you could do something fiction or you could incorporate it into some nonfiction stuff. If you're teaching a concept in social studies or science, kids could do stuff with that as well. So, you know, the comic strip is just the first example, um, but let's look at some other examples. And welcome for those of you that just joined us. We went ahead and got started right at 5.30 Eastern time. My name is Avra and we're here exploring Canva for EDU just for this short half an hour webinar today, um, just looking at this tool that started out as a paid tool for the rest of the world, and they've made it free for education. And so it offers a lot of opportunities for creating a lot of different things. All right. So we're going to jump in next and talk about mind maps. Okay. So in, in Canva, you as a teacher can create a mind map, and then you can push a blank one out to your students you know, a, a blank graphic organizer of sorts, where then they can type inside boxes and, um, and, you know, map out their thoughts, or they can search Canva themselves for mind maps and find one that looks right for them. And what's neat is that even if they find a template, it's completely customizable. So while, you know, we've got energy in the middle here, and then we have a series of circles, you know, if we wanted these to be a different color, they could be, or if we wanted there to only be five of them instead of, you know, the eight or nine that are here, we can change that and do that as well. So you've got lots of possibilities for making connections between different ideas and, mm -hmm. and, and allowing, give me one second. Okay. Um, and allowing kids to, to map out their own thoughts. So, um, you know, mind maps are just another option in here. You can type in mind map, you can type in graphic organizer, and you're gonna find tons and tons of templates in Canva. So that's just another example for you. Um, Infographics. So thinking about, you know, taking whatever it is that you're working on with your students um, and allowing them to demonstrate their understanding of content, you know, in a variety of ways. And guys, these are just three different examples that I found in, um, in the Canva 
library, but what is missing from each of these, and actually that I haven't mentioned yet, is that any of these can be turned into a video as well, like a video collage. So what I mean by that is, hey, in this one here, we're talking about states of matter, right? So solids and liquids and gases. We could take these words right here, move them over a little bit, put a little circle right here, and then put a student's picture in or video in where they get a chance to talk. And there's a video recording ability right within Canva. So they so if they're using a Chromebook or a computer, they don't even have to record a video using a different program. And Canva works on all devices. So it's going to work on iPads. It's going to work on phones. Okay. So if you've got older kids that have smartphones, they're going to find the app there as well. And the, you know, the camera is just integrated right in with those mobile devices as well. So, you know, think about taking this infographic and bringing it to life by allowing a student then to talk through the different states of matter or the different planets, that kind of thing. You know, for that matter, you can have more than one video on a page. So each of these, this could be a group project because you can collaborate inside of Canva as well. And so there could be a group of nine kids here and they're each talking about a different planet, right? So lots and lots of possibilities, I think, with this program. And so let me just kind of, you know, do a quick demo again of, you know, hey, how do we find this stuff? So what I always do is just start out at my Canva homepage, which is just canva.com. And then I do a lot of searching and I just come up here. And so I can type in, you know, infographic. And a lot of times I'll put the word education with it too. Okay. And you can see like here, they came up with a, a suggestion of an education infographic. And for me, you know, I think I'm a creative person, but I really like to get ideas from other people first. And then my my thoughts start to flow and my ideas start to flow. So, you know, I love to just kind of peek through here and get all sorts of ideas. And our students can do the exact same thing. It's neat to let them start out with a template like this, and then they can play with it and explore and start to learn the program even by playing with something that's already created because it gives them a sense of what's possible, right? So, you know, you can see just like hundreds of examples and, and different ways that you can set things up. And so this is considered an infographic. And like I said, let me just show you what I mean by that video. Let's see if I can find a good one here. That would be a good spot for a video. Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Here we go. This one seems to have a little extra space on it. So let's say that we, we have a student that's created some kind of infographic like this and then wants to bring it to life by explaining it. When we're here on a computer, so I'm on my MacBook right now. This is exactly what it would look like if kids were on a Chromebook, Windows laptop. It's all going to be the same. It's going to be a little bit different if you're on an iPad or an iPhone. But in here, what you do is you go over to this black bar on the left-hand side, okay? So we've got our like main canvas over here. And then over here, I can go to uploads, okay? And this is where I can pull anything up from my computer that I've got. Or if you notice underneath the button that says upload media, I've got record yourself. So let's see how this goes. I'm in a Zoom, you know, so I might be asking a little bit too much of my computer right now, but I'm gonna try it anyway. It lets me choose which camera I wanna use, okay? And it's gonna let me choose, you know, what, what microphone I'd want to if I had multiple of those. But I'm just gonna do a quick start recording. It's gonna count me down three, two, one. And then, hey, I'm recording. And so if I'm a student, I'm maybe going to talk through the causes of the Civil War or whatever it is. Maybe I even work in a math problem and took a picture of it and uploaded that picture and brought it into Canva. And I'm going to spice it up with, you know, my face and my, my voice and all of that. So I'm going to hit pause right now, guys. You can see up here, I've got a couple of tools. If I wanted to restart, if I had made a mistake can do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit done right here, just so that you can kind of see what it looks like as we put this in. So if I wanted to save and record another one, I could, or if I'd made a mistake and wanted to discard this, I sure could, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And then what's going to happen is it's, and then, Hey, I'm recording. And so if I'm a student <laughs> math problem and took a pic, uh, work in a math, all right, work in a math stop. problem and took a picture of it and uploaded that. All right, so you can see what it did is it brought my video right in here, okay? And I can make my video smaller. I can go and put it up somewhere else. This is a pretty, this is a tricky template here just because it's the infographic and it's so 
it's being difficult to move. Let me make it bigger. All right. So I could make it smaller and I can show you guys in a minute how I could make it into a circle. I can use these things called frames and actually put it in different shapes, which is really cool. So you can see like basically anything that you make in Canva can be downloaded. Okay. And what happens when you do that, you use this button up here in the top right corner and you hit download. And you guys, there's all these different, um, file types. Let's zoom in on this and just take a peek. Okay. So look at all the different things we can create. So we can create like that high quality image PNG file. That's like got a, you can have a transparent background on it. If you want that kind of thing, you can also have a JPEG, right? So just a photo kind of thing. This could be a PDF. Okay. But when you add audio or video to it, then what you're going to be doing is downloading it and it's going to become a video. So the entire thing, it's like a video collage of sorts, because this stuff all right here is all still images, right? And what you're doing is you're bringing it to life and, and creating it as a video by putting a video in there. Okay. And this video I recorded right here in Canva. But of course, if I had a video recorded in Screencastify or recorded in another video program of some sort, or even on a different device, I can always upload that and put it in here as well. So lots and lots of possibilities, I think, when you're combining all of these different elements, you know, text and images and, you know, audio and video, and then also actual photos, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I'm going to keep closing out of these tabs, guys, just because otherwise sometimes my computer starts to overheat a little bit. Let me show you a couple more examples and then I'll, I'll jump in and show you some more how to's as well. So you guys probably remember, you know, last summer in the summer of 2020, everyone started building out their virtual classrooms, <coughs> called them the Bitmoji classrooms. And, you know, you can do the same kind of thing here in Canva as well. So um, I'm just going to do a quick mute all guys because we just had a little bit of background noise. Um, so this is possible as well. They've got these in there for you. So you can, you know, and they've so they just have endless clip art. So if you want to, you could build these in here. You could also build something in slides, bring it into Canva or build something in Canva and take it into slides as well. So if you are, you know, your kids are used to a virtual classroom, that's, you know, a Google slideshow, and they're used to clicking on the links and getting places, you could just build the background of it, and then export it as a JPEG take it into Google Slides and then build out all your links like, like folks do. So this is just another idea. I've also seen teachers who have students build these kind of virtual scenes. And sometimes if their students are old enough to have like the Bitmoji um, program, the app, then they'll, they'll go ahead and do that. And sometimes they use other, you know, characters or, you know, little um, kind of character programs that aren't the Bitmoji, but it's a neat way of doing some digital storytelling and, you know, and doing some neat creation. So that's just another idea for you. So let's keep looking. Posters. So printed posters, digital posters, posters that teachers create with their students, posters that teachers might use in a digital world to recognize a student, student of the week, someone who's having a birthday, or hey, maybe a group project. Kids are creating a poster themselves or with partners or with a group to be able to you know, demonstrate their understanding of whatever it is they're doing, right? So these can be any dimensions. You know, these are just kind of portrait eight and a half by 11 kind of feel. And, um, but you can also do ones that are wide, you know, that are more of a um, landscape kind of wide screen. So you, you've got no limitations in terms of dimensions. And I'll show you how to start from scratch and do custom dimensions in just a minute. So then, you know, another thing I used to have my students do is like a, a um, fictitious advertisement or like, hey, student council, you know, maybe we're making an announcement, that kind of thing. So just trying to give you food for thought right now in terms of all different, um, you know, all different possibilities and th cool things that you could have that you could build um, with your kids, you know, getting more curricular based, right? Um, you know, maybe you're an ELA teacher looking for a fun way for kids to do a book review or this like char character analysis. Um, this, this here actually is, can be a single image or Canva does um, pre beautiful presentations. 
So you can do a whole slideshow. And when you do that, let's see if I linked this one. I didn't. So let me hop back over and go back to Canva. So guys, each time I go to Canva, I always go up to the top left to the little Canva icon and it takes me back to my home screen, okay? And down across the left, um, I'm gonna choose all your designs right there because that way then I can see all the different things that I've created. And this one, it was just one that I was playing around with and it was like a book review. And so take a look at this. This could be multiple pages. So, you know, we could do the introduction to the story and then, hey, here's the characters. And you can start kids out with this type of template or they can build it from scratch if they'd like. So let me just, you know, type in book reports. They call them book reports in here. You might call them a book review or a book snap or all different things. Um, but if you click on any one of these guys, you're going to see that um, you've got like 13 pages and they're all beautiful. And you can, just so you know, you can have kids build their, their presentations right within Canva. And when you're done, when they're done, they can share them. So they can click share and you can come on down and you can share the same way you can with Google tools. You could share it and give it give someone editing rights, okay? Or you could just give them the viewing rights, that kind of thing. So you can do this, or if you kind of are feeling like, you know what, this is great, but my kids already know Google Slides really well. Well, what you could always do then is export, you know, these different pages. If you just as the teacher wanna use this as a creation tool for yourself, you can take these, that entire picture, export it, download it, as a JPEG. So what I would do here is go right here and choose JPEG. And then right here, guys, it says select pages. And I might, maybe I would do all of them, or maybe I would just select one or two, you know, the ones that I want, something like that. And then you could take that whole thing and go and put it in Google Slides. You could put it in as the background and then kids could make text boxes and, um, you know, complete the work and, and do their creation in that program. So it, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, you don't have to use, like your kids don't have to use Canva, but they certainly can if you want, okay? Um, I have a series of videos on kind of how to set it up and how to import from Google Classroom and, and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna give you the, the links to all of that it, it, you know, at the end of our time today so that that way you have it. Um, but I think, you know, you can just see the, the potential here. Um, so let me, I know we're, we're down to about seven minutes or so. So let me just um, kind of go down and, and show you um, an example of um, a couple more examples on, and an actual example of like a video that you can create as well. So in Canva, you can have just a slideshow, just like a PowerPoint or a, a Google slideshow, but you can also actually allow kids to um, do what's called present and record, okay? So for example, if I were to come back in here, what you can do here actually, guys, is you can go up to the top right and there's a three dot menu right up here, okay? And you can go down to what's called present and record. So this is like, hey, Google Slides plus Screencastify, bringing the two together. And what we can do is record our presentation of the slides. So that's another option. And then that creates a video, okay? That's one possibility. You can also take a set of slides and create and, and have Canva create them as a video. So you can set music in the background and, and that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do there is just kind of show you an example and I won't play this whole thing, but I want you to kind of see just what's possible because that's what, that's what this half an hour is about. It's really just about what's possible. So I know I'm not going deep into the how, but you, know, you can always reach out to me if you want the hows. And I've got, like I said, I've got a series of videos that can help you with the how. So let's just take a look at what's possible here. I'm gonna turn up my volume real quick and hit play. Hi, my name is Cam, and in this presentation, you'll be learning about my summer. So on this slide, you guys, you can hear that like I put, we, my son and I did this together and we put music in the background and we've got like a still image on one side and then we've got video on the other and then some fun like animated text in the middle.
when you're bringing video in, you can actually crop it on the, like on the front end, you know, trim it on the front and the back. So this video here of his rolled ice cream, I actually, we broke into like four different slides um, so that that way we could just, you know, just take parts of the video by trimming it, okay? So you can see that there's just a lot of possibilities here in terms of the different things. These are just still images, okay? And then you've got, you can do a video with a couple of still images on either side, right? So this is all just a video. And what happens is when you're done with these, you can download them as, let me just go in here, let me just go into this. Um, you can download this in any format. So you can download it as, you know, a, a still image. You could download it as an MP4, okay? So then you could take it and put it somewhere else, like Google Drive or YouTube or something like that, okay? Or um, you can just use the link and do the sharing option. And so everything can be um, created as a link. So if you're depending on, you know, what your learning management system is, maybe you use Canvas or Schoology and you just want to have kids turn stuff in, you can have them turn it in with a link as well. So there's a lot of possibilities, um, you know, in this program. I, and I thank you, Nicole. I, I did see um, what you wrote and I wrote you back. Yeah, building stuff out in this program. I've heard people doing it with Jamboard. I've heard people doing it with Seesaw um, and definitely Google Slides, you know. So it's a great place for teachers to build things as well as I think it's an amazing tool for kids. Um, I do think, you know, it's a pretty robust tool. And so, you know, I probably, unless I was actually teaching technology and, and I was like, my pure objective was to learn the program. If I'm a classroom teacher, I might not be doing it with first or second grade, but I think, you know, something like this right here could just be the child changing their name, right? So hello, my name is, they learn to type their name in there and then they learn to record themselves or just put a picture in, you know, so either just a quick video or a picture of themselves. And then that, you know, that seems like something you could do with little guys even maybe. So, you know, just pos lots of possibilities. And the last one I'll give you, because I know we're about two minutes from being done, but it does have a nice background remover. Okay. So let me just quickly show you that. What I'm going to do now is do what I promised. And that is come up to where it says create a design. You guys, there's all different like um, templates in terms of um, the dimensions, okay? Or you can go all the way down to custom size. So let's say we wanted the custom, you know, you wanted it to be square. You could do it like a thousand by a thousand pixels or something like that, okay? So be aware that you can make it absolutely whatever dimensions you want it to be. I'll go ahead and just throw in not a custom size here. We'll just go in and do like a presentation so I can show you this real quick because I know we're almost out of time. But the other thing I did promise to show is the photos. You guys, there's so many beautiful photos. So if I come in here and I type in beach, okay, you're going to see, you know, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, um, of beautiful pictures, you know, lovely, um, lovely photos that are free, that are high quality, you know, that you don't have to worry about copyright. Okay. And so that's one of the things that I love about this. So I'm actually going to, let's see, I'm going to go to background right now and type in beach. And that way I can set this as the background. All right. So let's see what I can find here. All right. I'm just going to do this one real quick. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go to your uploads, any picture you've got, right? And you can do a, it's got a wonderful background remover. So let's just take this daughter, this picture of my daughter and her daughter, okay? We'll take her off the beach in Florida and put her on this beach instead, right? So I bring in this picture right here and I go on right up to edit image. We don't even need like remove.bg or anything. We've just got the background remover right here. Okay, and it's gonna go ahead and just remove that background of where she's standing and then be able to put her right here on this other beach, okay? So you can see how kids can, you know, put themselves in the middle of the rainforest as they're telling rainforest facts, or they can put themselves up in the mountains, you know, if they're doing some digital storytelling there or something like that. So lots of, you know, lots of possibilities for you guys. And like I said, 
I'm going to give you the link to this slideshow right now. If you click on this, this will take you to the EdTech Teacher blog. Okay. And I've got about four or five articles that are up there right now. Um, and then I've also got a, just a YouTube playlist that I keep adding to as I play around. So these are more of the how to's because I know this was a quick half an hour, but it was really just meant to be like an inspirational half an hour of like food for thought for you, different things that are possible. This, just so you know, this little image right here, I created in Canva and I, and I downloaded it as a GIF. So just as that animated GIF, um, which is what then creates, you know, just the fun little animation in the middle. So, um, so lots of possibilities for you. Let me throw the, the um, link to, thanks, Nicole. I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you said that. I appreciate your feedback. Um, there's the link, you guys, to the slides. Feel free to, you know, take them, bookmark them, whatever. I may add to them at some point. Um, make a copy, do whatever you want. And those resources are at the bottom. And my email address is avra at edtechteacher. I'm going to write that down in here because this is actually not clickable. Um, avra at edtechteacher. Dot org. So if you have questions or you're having a tr trouble doing any of it, just, you know, shoot me an email and I'll help you if I can. Otherwise, you know, please let me know if you, you know, do something awesome with your students. I would love to see examples. So you guys, thanks for being here. I know for those of you that are on the East Coast, it's dinner time. Um, and for those of you on the West Coast, you're probably just getting done with school. So have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week. I appreciate you being here. Thanks, everybody.